Energy. Mm. All right, what's energy? If I do this long enough, I'm gonna get tired. How come I'm losing energy? Uh, need some coffee? Energy, I got food. Snacks, chocolates, got energy. What is, what is energy? People talk about energy, I like your energy. Um, what is it? In fact, we talk about momentum, right? Momentum. These guys you've seen before, called Newton's Cradles. Newton's Cradle. And it turns out to understand this, not only do you have to understand momentum, but you have to understand energy. In fact, that the, the fact that that wiggles back and forth is actually very interesting. It's not that this is a bad Newton's Cradle. In fact, it's going to move back and forth, and we're going to analyze that more in a bit, too. So energy, what, what is it? What? Sound and speakers and everything, energy. So let's go over here and let's, let's, let's describe energy, define energy carefully. All right, energy, what is it? What do we mean when we say energy? As scientists, applied scientists, engineers, uh, we need to use our words carefully, right? We've defined mass carefully. For momentum, what we did is we took our kinematics analysis and our force analysis, and then we derived, we started there in these videos, and we derived the momentum impulse relation, conservation of momentum, we have definitions of momentum, definitions of impulse, and those laws. Then we stopped and said, hey, how much is uh, a lot of momentum or a little momentum? How much is a lot of impulse? How, what's the duration of time for a collision or an explosion? We developed an intuition. So derivation and intuition. For energy, I want to go the other way. For energy, let's talk conceptually, and then we'll layer in the theoretical. Then we'll derive, again, from kinematics and force, because remember, we got the four cornerstones of uh, physical analysis being kinematics, force analysis, energy, and momentum, and energy and momentum kind of being a rearrangement of kinematics and force. It's not a new thing, but it's a new analysis approach that makes it easier. Lots of good insight from that. So what is energy not? I really want to say this is a pet peeve of mine. Energy is not light. People talk about light and they say it's energy. It isn't energy. That's too loose. Light is not energy. Energy is not light. Okay? Light has energy, but guess what? Light has momentum. It has electric properties, it has magnetic properties. So energy is a property that light has, but other things have too, and we'll talk about those properties, okay? So energy is not light. Please don't, don't use that, okay? Energy is not an entity. I define entity as, an, as something occupying space and time, which leads to other interesting questions between matter and light, and that's where we should be in our questioning. But it's not an entity. It's, Something that we measure, it's a measurable property. We measure time, we measure length, we measure mass, we use electronics, and we infer some property we call energy, energy from these measurements, okay? All right, great, so that's what it's not. Is energy light? No. Is light energy? No. Does light have energy? Sure. It's got other things too, momentum, etc. Not mass, that's an interesting thing. All right, so let's go back here. What do we mean by property? Well, for example, mass is the measurable quantity and amount or property that both resists acceleration, so we can measure the resistance to speeding up, slowing down, and turning, and it's the measurable property that's responsible for gravity, so we can use scales and things that balance the force of gravity and look at it that way. Momentum. Uh, is mass times velocity. Direction matters in our theoretical structure here. In a loose sense, that's the property of motion. So you can transfer motion from one thing to another. Right? It, can, it can give another thing motion. So something with more momentum can transfer more motion. And we'll talk about some interesting things as we go along there. Uh, again, it's, you know, we saw there was a rearrangement of kinematic analysis and force analysis. So here's my definition, what I think is the best definition uh, for you to think about energy. Energy is the ability to cause change 
of any sort. If you stick with that, that'll go a long ways in your understanding and feeling comfortable with the, the mathematics that you're going to work out and the problems that you're going to work out. The ability to cause change of any sort. Frequently, the definition given for energy is the ability to do work. It's very limiting, and you would have to extend the definition of work or something to really make that uh, feel good and, and be clear. The ability to cause change of any sort, then you can look around and go, that's got energy, that's got energy, that's got energy, because it can do what? Because it can hurt me. The more it can hurt me, the more energy it has. Now, I need to measure and put it on a scale and something, but the more it can hurt me, the more energy it has, right? The more it can heal me, that's also causing a change. So healing is good, causing a change, right? Changing motion, the more it can change motion. That's causing a change. If you change the motion, what do we call that? Accelerate, right? You can increase speed, decrease speed, or turn. Uh, so if it's got energy, it can cause a change in motion. It can cause something to be lifted up. It could stretch or compress something, right? That's a change. It could change the temperature of something. It could change the phase from a gas to, or from, let's go from a solid to a, to a liquid to a gas. Take a chunk of ice out of the freezer. You're adding energy. You can change the color. Think of a piece of bread that becomes toast and then it becomes burnt toast. You cook things, right? That has energy. Any of this is energy. So notice how different energy is from momentum. You have molecular, atomic, nuclear changes. And those require this concept that we call energy, this thing that we call and sort of take these measurements and put it into this theoretical structure we call energy with these different definitions. And here's the thing. Again, energy is not light, right? But to create light requires energy. And when you absorb light, you can take in energy. So there's, but energy, again, not a thing. I'm not, I'm not saying, I now have keys, I don't have keys. I can't say, oh, I've lost my energy, they're somewhere in my drawer here. There, or it. So notice the difference. Momentum is simply mass times velocity. And there's not different types of momentum. Energy, however, can come in many, many forms. There are many ways in which you can cause change, many reasons that you can cause change. So that's pretty interesting, and that's what we're going to explore right now, all right? Okay, so let's, let's take a look over here, and then we'll take a look on the table and, and uh, think about these sorts of things. So there are lots of types of energy. There's only momentum is MV. But energy, well, what we're going to be working with is kinetic energy, energy of motion, mass, if something has more mass, if this is coming at me, which is, ugh, then I worry more about it. If a ping pong ball is coming at me, I'm not going to freak out. Okay. And if it's coming out faster, a baseball, I mean, someone tosses me a baseball, I'm not going to worry about it. A uh, major league pitcher tosses me a baseball as a fastball, I don't even think I want to be behind the plate. I mean, I kind of do, but I'd have to have gear on. It's scary. Uh, so mass and speed. Clearly, that's the energy of motion. You have more ability to change things if you have more mass and more speed, right? But it's relative. So yes, if this is thrown at me, I'm worried about it, it's dangerous, but suppose it's traveling. Suppose this thing is traveling 300 miles an hour. Am I gonna worry about it? No, if I'm in the plane with it and we're both traveling 300 miles an hour, then relative to me, it's got no energy, it's got no ability to, to bash open my head or whatever. So it's relative. And just keep that in the back of your mind, it's interesting. Velo motion is relative, actually. All that matters are the changes. Change, something fundamental about change in physical process. All right, so energy of motion we call kinetic energy, just like kinematics, just like cinema comes is moving pictures, comes the word kinetic, kinesiology, body motion, right? kinetic energy, energy of motion, there's that one. What other energy do you have? We'll get an equation for that. Gravitational potential energy, all right, I take the same thing. 
and I lift it over my head. Now I can take something else and lift it over my head uh, like this. I can lift it the same. I'm more worried about this than this. In fact, watch a bold move, right? Didn't really cause, it caused some change, but not much. Didn't uh, dent my head. So there's gravitational potential energy. That requires the force of gravity. Now just keep in mind that that's an interaction. Because when we're going to start out here, we're going to talk a little bit more simply and then layer in some subtlety later. If we do all the subtlety now, it's just it's too much. You'll get more sophisticated. So that requires a force of gravity. The stronger the force of gravity, the more potential energy and more height. Here, I am worried about it. Here, I'd really be worried about it. Higher and higher, you really worry about it, clearly. So that's all. It can cause more change. That's relative. Where is h equal to zero? Well, it could be in my head, right? If it's below here, I'm not worried about it, except for now my toes. So maybe the ground is h equals zero. Here's going to be the news. You get to choose that. And with energy, it is a scalar. So if I choose this to be zero, does this have more ability to hurt or less? Clearly more. If I choose my coordinates up, then that's positive. If I choose my coordinates down, that's still more energy. I don't care. That's more energy. If I choose that to be zero, then that's positive. That's zero. That's negative. If I choose that to be zero, that's positive. That's zero. That's negative. That's never more gravity, gravitational potential energy. In fact, what is potential energy? The word potential energy, because we're going to see this in a sense, it's the potential for kinetic energy. It's the, that's why I worry about it, because if you let go, it's going to speed up. And if it increases speed, and it's got a lot of mass, that's going to hurt. OK, so potential energy is the potential for kinetic energy. When we get to electrical stuff, so I'll, I'll use that a little bit more. But anyway, gravitational potential energy requires a force of gravity. More height, more gravitational potential energy. It is relative. You get to set where h equals 0, but anything higher has more positive, less is negative. Cool. Springs, elastic potential energy from the force of a spring. It depends on the strength of the spring and the amount stretched or compressed. So if it's a strong one, again, it depends on the amount stretch. I stretch, stretch, stretch. It depends. Here's rubber bands. Those have elasticity. I've got one. I've got two, right? Take two, take two, three, take four. Go up to your friend, go like that. They're going to freak out, right? Go like that to their, their cheek or the back of the neck. Don't let go. But there's potential for motion, isn't there? And there's potential for kinetic energy. So it's got potential to move. So there's energy. It has an ability to hurt, right? Out. See? And so just, you know, if you don't get it, keep doing that and self-flagellation. And then you, you've, got, you've got your elastic or spring potential energy. How strong the spring is, how much it's strong. So you can see energy all around, ability to cause change. There's what I call jiggling energy, jiggling energy, right? Jiggling energy is thermal energy. When you hit surfaces, the atoms jiggle. They jiggle. They go from kinetic to sort of an elastic potential, to kinetic, to elastic potential, like that, right? Jiggling energy. And sound. And it's kind of cool. If for some reason, we emotionally react to sound. But sound is jiggling energy. It goes through steel. It goes through air. Sound, the jiggling energy of atoms. OK? I don't know time. Is that thing shut off? I don't know. You're We're good. Uh, there's electric energy, there's atomic energy, there's nuclear energy. All these things are energy, right? Uh, so we're going to need different formula for different kinds of energy, but they all have the ability to change. There's energy units. So we talk about joules often when we talk about mechanical things moving and lifting cranes and things like that. Joules are often used. One joule is a newton times a meter. That's a kilogram, meter per second squared, times a meter. A kilogram, meter squared, per second squared. Many ways, know your units, follow. 
There's also a calorie, but still energy, right? It's all still energy. You can use calories. A calorie is like four joules, about 4.19. You can look it up, right? There's kilocalories, or thousands of calories, which is often written with a capital C in your food. If you think you're getting uh, 100 calories out of that thing, you're getting 100 kilocalories, but it doesn't matter. It's the same, same thing that you're used to, but still. There's British thermal units. There's conversions between all these because they're all energy. There's electron volts. One electron volt, volt is 1.6 to 10 to the negative 19 joules. It's a tiny bit of energy. If you want to pull an electron off of a hydrogen atom, it takes about 13.6 of these guys, right? And then we can use it for atomic, nuclear, things like this. All units of energy, so easily converted, again, for mechanical things that we're studying in this course on mechanics, we'll often use joules. But you can use any units you want, just like length, miles, kilometers, meters, inches, and that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to continue on this journey in, in just a moment.